millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high-quality meat cooked at home because... Let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential. Three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. What many experts recommend that if you don't have pet insurance, that you at least have a dedicated pet emergency fund. And that would be at least $5,000 for the what if. Welcome to everyone's talking money podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. You've probably heard the saying, dogs are man's and woman's best friend. Well, I can tell you after getting our pup Winnie this year, that is for sure a true statement. We all know dogs are much more than that. They are truly family members. What is also true is that a dog can be an expensive investment. I don't even want to tell you how much money we've already spent on toys and shoes alone in the six months of having Winnie, which I'm sure all of you dog parents you can relate to. Am I right? So I thought it would make sense to devote a whole episode to our furry best friends and explore dog ownership, the cost versus investment. Our guest on this dogalicious episode is Krista Karpowicz, who owns Wag Out Loud and is the host of the Wag Out Loud podcast. That's right. I said podcast. The Wag Out Loud podcast is a show that helps us pet parents be the best advocate for our dog's health and wellness. Krista is here to share everything she knows about dogs, including how much money to spend on food, what to feed your dog, what kind of pet insurance she loves, how much money to devote to training, treats and toys, and so much more. Whether you have a dog or you're just looking to bring one into your life, this episode is for you. So let's start woofing. Okay, I promise. That's the last pun. Let's start talking. Krista, I am so excited to have you join us on the podcast today. Thanks so much for being here. Shauna, I have been so looking forward to this. Yay! Let's <laughs> geek out about dogs. Yes. So, I, I mean, I want to talk all things dog ownership with you. We got um, our first puppy. I mean, this is the first dog I've ever had. Her name is Winnie Stardust, of all oh. things. She's got, she's black and white, and she's got white on her uh, paws and then white on her tail tip. And she's got a little white kind of zigzag 
a stripe between her two eyes. So we were kind of thinking of like David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust and yep. <laughs> kind of went with Winnie Stardust. So she really embodies that name. Oh. We got her uh, in March. She was about eight weeks old and it has been a complete learning curve. <laughs> sure. And, you know, a beautiful ride ever since, but there have been some some bumpy moments. But you have this certification in canine nutrition and you host a fun, I'm going to try to say this right, a po- podcast? Podcast, you got it. <laughs> podcast, yes, called Wag Out Loud. So I, I, you know, I can't wait to dive in all things dog, but to kind of get started, I'd love to maybe geek out a little bit about, you know, why are we so obsessed with dogs? Like, what do they bring into our lives? Oh my gosh. We, that's a whole nother show, but (laughs) I would say, I mean, this is scientifically proven that here are all the benefits. So dogs actually help people with loneliness. Dogs reduce stress and anxiety. I mean, Science has shown that even petting a dog, it lowers lowers our blood pressure, our heart rate, it slows down our breathing, it relaxes our muscles, and dogs help us get along with other people. And you might have heard it, Shauna, that a lot of people dating, you know, they are more attractive (laughs) if they have a dog. Make sure you get a cute looking dog, right? If you're especially if you're a single guy. (laughs) It helps, yeah. Chicks dig that. (laughs) Um, You know, they keep us healthier in so many ways. They lower our cortisol level. They're good for our heart. They encourage us to move, of course, to go walk the dog. That helps us exercise more. And studies show they make us happier and they help us cope with crisis. And even with seniors, they help seniors with cognitive function. So there's so many reasons that people have been drawn to dogs. And I mean, most people know that dogs are descendants from the gray wolf and they were domesticated. You know, science is still trying to figure it out, but it happened um, somewhere in Europe or Western Siberia between 18 and 32,000 years ago. So dogs have been with us for a long time and of course have been companions, but since they were domesticated from wolves, we, as you know, have bred them for different jobs and they're in different shapes and sizes, colors. We have purebreds, mixed breeds, ears up, ears down, short noses. (laughs) And these dogs that we've created are now part of the family unit. Absolutely. I mean, we we say that Winnie is our daughter. Yes. <laughs> which, course. you know, might seem a little crazy to other people. But she, you know, I, I can really see how a dog, you know, I think because they have this great personality, right? Like the thing I love about Winnie, and she's teaching us so much, is that even if something goes bad or she, you know, there's a bad moment or maybe we get frustrated with her, like the next second, she just kind of shakes it off and she's like, okay, can I, can I lick you now? Or do you want to go play? And I think that's like such an amazing quality that I try to embody and I do it not great at all, but you can watch (laughs) how a dog does this and how like you interact with a dog. You know, you hit it on the head, Shauna. My, my love for dogs is because I honestly believe they are higher beings than we are. Mm. And aside from the unconditional love that they display, you are so right. They are here to teach us how to play, how to not have anger and jealousy, and they don't hold grudges. They, they're like, hey, let's play. <laughs> and... I love that my dog Winston is here. You know, I work from home and he'll tell me, okay, mom, it's time to go out for a walk. And we call it a sniffari because I let him sniff and do his thing. He leads the way. And it's such an amazing bonding experience at the same time. So you, you're right. We can learn so much from them. Okay, well, the fact that your dog name is Winston, which I did not know that before, I have to just share 
a quick little story before we dive into the money side of dogs. So yeah. um, in, in 2018, actually almost four years ago, to the day that we're recording this, I had an accident and I became permanently deaf in my left ear. And I suffer from 24-7 tinnitus, which is like the worst kind of mm. whirling, buzzing in your ear. And shortly after that happened, I don't know, I don't know how, but I just all of a sudden got totally like obsessed with having a dog and thought about how, you know, a dog could help me maybe with hearing and just maybe just help me, I don't know, relax and be more present. And so I created this kind of like fictitious dog in my head and I named him Winston. Okay. <laughs> I called him Winston, the super dog game. Yes, totally crazy. And I would you know, talk out loud with with people about my fictitious dog and how one day I was going to have a real dog named Winston. And uh, before we got Winnie, I was looking online at breeders and she had already been born. She was about, I don't know, four or five weeks before just I saw her picture and I was like, okay, that's our dog, Mm. but it's a female. And so I thought, (laughs) okay, well, to honor Winston, my fictitious dog, I'll go with Winnie, which is which is close enough. Yeah. So when you said Winston, I was like, okay, we were, we were meant to have this, this is chat. Crazy. <laughs> I want to talk about bringing a dog home. So for anyone listening, you know, the, it can, it can be a big investment and mm-hmm. particularly I want to talk about, um, we'll get into kind of all the things that you need, but I want to talk a little bit about pet insurance. This is something I spend a lot of time kind of researching pet insurance, like, should I have it? Should I not have it? Uh, You know, and so we ended up going with pet insurance. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that in just a little bit. But what are some of the the biggest expenses that really come with dog ownership that maybe we don't always think about when we get a dog? Well, why don't we start with pet insurance? Because, you know, more and more people are looking into it, more and more companies are offering it. And as you know, especially since COVID started, everything has gone up in price, and that includes veterinary costs. Um, So I've heard stories of emergency vet bills over $10,000. And what many experts recommend that if you don't have pet insurance that you at least have a dedicated pet emergency fund. And that would be at least $5,000 for the what if. Um, right. And there's really a lot have of what to ifs, shop. right? Like- oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you have to shop the different policies because just like with human insurance, there are you know, they won't cover pre-existing conditions or my podcast. And what I focus on is more of a holistic or integrative approach to canine health. So a lot of these policies don't cover preventative. So I really think people need to do their homework, but the cool thing is that there's new companies now. So the average cost of health insurance for a dog is about $65 per month. And again, when you're spending that much, look to see what the policy covers and what it doesn't. Um, There are some out there, like there's a new company called Pumpkin, and I like them because they do offer uh, preventative care packages, which is awesome. Oh, um, so not pumpkin many places is one. do I know from, from my research. And have you ever heard of Lemonade? Lemonade is another uh, new yes. insurance that they have all different coverages and it's more affordable. You can get a plan for as low as $10 a month. But what I have found and absolutely love is a company called POP, and that's P-A-W-P. And what I like about them, it's it's almost better than uh, pet insurance because for $24 a month, you get 24-7 unlimited access, access to a team of veterinary professionals. So if you uh, either phone or video, so you have that. And then also you can put up to six pets on that same plan 
And every year you get up to $3,000 per year in an emergency fund. No questions asked. If you have to take your dog to the vet, you know, they broke their leg or they have an open wound from something or they need surgery. That is $3,000 a year that would cover those expenses. So I, I really that's, like that. That's plan. pretty incredible. It is. It is. Um, but I would still, if you can save and, you know, that magic number of the $5,000 per animal, just in case. Yeah. And I, you know, the statistics are that on average, most people don't have more than $400 in savings just as is. So, you know, really thinking about that when it comes to your dog and thinking about, just being um, protected a bit. So you maybe don't have to go to credit cards or maybe you don't have to, I don't know, you know, g- give your dog to someone else. I've heard all sorts of, of different stories. Uh, but I think, you know, pet insurance is is great. I'm a big advocate of it. I believe our plan is somewhere around $45 a month. But one of the things I like, we ended up going with a company called True Panion, is that, you um, they, with certain vets, they can pay directly to the vet. So it isn't a reimbursement type plan where I have to pay Mm. out of pocket first and then I get the insurance reimbursed. So I really like that aspect, but I think it, I love that you gave, you know, some examples there and some ideas for people to think about. Cause I think, you know, what you're trying to avoid, right. Is the catastrophe that like $10,000 bill. And we both know that it can happen very easily. Uh, So another thing I want to talk about when you first get a pet is, um, and specifically because you're kind of a canine nutrition expert, is, you know, the food, the treats, all of that sort of stuff. And I would imagine that there's a lot of things we can buy that are, I don't want to say a waste of money, but maybe not the best money spent. So how should we think about those types of items when we're, when we're getting a dog? Well, Uh, food is, I believe the foundation for health for us and our dogs. And unfortunately in the 1950s when, you know, canned dog food came into being and then the extruded or dry processed food came to be, a lot of people thought, oh, well, you know, that's dog food, that's healthy. And it really isn't, um, Now, I'm not here to shame anybody because I was that person before I got into the industry. I I fed kibble. I didn't know any better. But now that I'm in the industry, I got the nutrition certification. The best we can do for our dogs, if it's feasible financially, is to feed a fresh cooked or raw diet because that is true food. It's a live food as opposed to kibble that is processed at such high heat with not good ingredients. You know, it's, they have to actually put synthetic vitamins back in because the mush that they're, that is in the end is not of any nutritional value to the dog. So they have to put these synthetic vitamins back in And I really want to encourage people to look into this further because um, more than 50% of our dogs, especially over the age of 10, are getting cancer. It's just the way it is. Wow. And that is something that we have to reverse. It's, you know, food is definitely a part of it. Um, The environment is a part of it. There's so many toxins in the home and outside and EMF, the electromagnetic frequency. Um, And this all pertains to us as well. You know, humans are eating so much processed food. Therefore, we are seeing so many more instances of disease because of inflammation. And it's the same with our dogs. Their bodies, you know, So many people say, oh, my dog is allergic to this food, or they're biting their feet, or they have hot spots, or a bad GI tract. Well, 
it really comes down to the quality of the food that we're feeding and not to get into a lot of detail. I don't, I know we don't have tons of time, but in my mind, invest in their food now in a quality diet, if you can, because you're going to be paying later inevitably when you have high vet bills to try to address a certain issue or disease. That makes total sense. So give me an idea of when you say like raw food or food we cook at home, like Mm -hmm. what would that be? What would that look like? Well, luckily now there are so many great commercial dog foods. Um, You know, I encourage people to go to your local little pet boutique and you can get, when I say raw and some people are freaked out about that, Um, it can be frozen and you can see it in different forms, you know, like little nuggets or patties. And many of these commercial brands have the muscle meat, the organ meat, the bone, and then they've added fruits and veggies to make it a totally complete and balanced diet. There are other people that when they raw feed, it's called the prey model diet, or you might have heard of the barf diet, the bones and raw food. And it takes a little bit more work, but you can get raw food, you know, from your grocery store, from your butcher, from local farmers, from co-ops, and you can put together your dog's meals with, you know, the prey model diet does not include dairy or fruits and veggies. Um, it's, it's literally dead animals <laughs> that our dogs can eat. And it's the whole thing. It's the bones, it's the eyeballs. Sometimes it's the fur. So there are different levels to feeding raw And now you can find freeze-dried raw, which I love when I travel with Winston. So I just have to add water, and it's a complete meal. He loves it. It's awesome. Um, And then with the fresh, you know, there's so many companies that have come out now that will deliver right to your door. And, you know, these are cooked with the muscle meat, and they might have brown rice or quinoa and veggies and fruits. And, you know, these companies are doing it right. They're asking in a very lengthy uh, questionnaire about your particular dog, and they will customize their meals, ship them to your door frozen. And, you know, you just take out the little portion per day and thaw it out and feed your dog. And that again, is a complete and balanced diet. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful. 
ad-free and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah. You're not alone, but worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T-O-S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. I think what I love about what you're saying is A really good point, you know, sometimes we want to take the easy route, like specifically when it comes to money. And look, I understand owning a dog is not a cheap investment. And I don't even, as a money person, I haven't even added up all the costs of that we've spent on on Winnie since we've gotten her. (laughs) But, um, you know, investing in good food and good nutrition now to avoid maybe some of those as best as you can, you know, some of those bigger cost items when it comes to the vet or, you know, whatever, even just to keep your dog around and part of the family for a little bit longer. I like this idea of really thinking out food. And I'm curious if, you know, somebody's listening and they're like, okay, but maybe Krista, I can't afford that all the time. Is it something maybe they should consider, you know, some of the time? Absolutely. I've done shows and talked to experts where is dog food on a budget? How can you feed healthy and affordable at the same time? And what I tell people, the one thing about kibble is it's already considered complete and balanced. So you have that base. So sometimes maybe, you know, maybe two or three times during the week, you feed fresh food or a raw food diet and then kibble the other days. Or what I like to suggest is take your kibble, feed a lot less, and add fresh food to that. And we're talking blueberries, great antioxidant, Uh, vegetables, awesome, phytonutrients, antioxidants. And the one thing people have to remember, though, with dogs is that they don't have amylase in their saliva, 
so they can't break down food uh, as good as we can. And, you know, back in the day, dogs didn't go out to a cornfield and, <laughs> and eat plants. Um, so it's hard for them to break the cellular wall of plants uh, with their digestive system. So you can either puree vegetables, you can lightly saute them, or I've just learned that just buying frozen vegetables and then thawing them, so going from frozen to room temperature or a little above, breaks that um, cellular wall. So it's easily digestible, which is really cool. So I would add some green leafy vegetables to the kibble, go to the grocery store and get sardines in water, super inexpensive. I know at my grocery store, they're like a dollar each. Uh, so the sardines are really good omega fatty acids for your dog. Um, goat milk, bone broth. I mean, there's so many things that you can just add, whether that's every day, every other day, you know, whatever you can do um, that makes it affordable. Because we have so many people that love dogs and maybe they have five large dogs. You know, that really adds up when you're feeding that kind of a crew. So <laughs> it, it has to be within your budget, but try to do the best that you can. So moving on a little bit from food, I, I want to talk about um, training, like classes and socialization. I know when we, we got Winnie, we were like, okay, we want to have um, a very nice dog. And, you know, we put her in, we got a trainer and got some training for her and then realized like, okay, this is different stages that we do it. And we try to take her at least once a week to a socialization place. Um, particularly when we do podcast interviews so she can go and play with other dogs. So, you know, if we've, if we just got a dog and we're kind of thinking about like allocating our expenses, you know, tell me a little bit about like training and socialization. Like what should we spend our money on? Well, proper socialization as a puppy sets them up for success as an adult. There are so many dogs, as you know, that have, high anxiety and we only can help them if when they're a puppy, they meet other people that they meet other dogs that they're exposed to, you know, loud sounds and it just will make them a better dog throughout their life. So I am a huge proponent of, puppy kindergarten, of play dates, of, um, you know, obedience training for sure. And you can go as far as I know with Winston, when he was younger, uh, we did therapy dog. So we went into um, hospice and assisted living. And it was just so rewarding for us as well as the people that we met uh, because people just, you know, their eyes are wide and their faces light <laughs> up and they want to pet the dog and they want to share what dogs they had during their lives. You know, it just, it, it's so rewarding. And you can also do the American Kennel Club Canine Good Citizen, which takes your obedience training a little further and it's actually a test that they put you through, you know, will your dog stand there when another person and their dog walk by? And if you tell them to come from, you know, far away, will they do it? So they have to do all these different tasks to be awarded that uh, AKC Good Citizen uh, certificate. So that is also something that I really encourage people to do. And then there's so many different sports now that you can do with your dog, which is great for bonding and puts them in different environments. Um, there's lore coursing. There's, you know, I've got a terrier, so it's called go to ground where 
there's a rat in a cage under the ground, and that's what terriers uh, <laughs> were bred for, and they have to go through these tunnels underground to wow. find the rat, and it's so cool. <laughs> Um, there's Who dock knew? diving, <laughs> frisbee. I mean, you. There's so many things. Agility. Winston and I did agility as well, and he absolutely loved it. So, I you know I encourage people to do more things with their dog. I travel with Winston all the time. He goes on the plane right under my seat. There are hotels now all across the country and the world that take dogs. So you can really make them a huge part of your life. And I think that will just make them happier because they're with you. And every time you expose them to a new situation, it just makes them a better dog. I want to circle back a little bit to um, our discussion about pet insurance and talk about picking a vet. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. When we First got Winnie, we took her to the vet that was kind of closest to us that felt, you know, good. And she went there. And then one day she had, um, she's a uh, mini golden mountain doodle. So she's half Bernadoodle, half golden doodle. So she's got a lot of fur. And one day we noticed she was just like scooting her butt on the floor a lot and was Mm -hmm. really agitated. And we were like, what is this? What's going on? And so we thought, oh my gosh, is she... Is she not pooping? Like, what's happening? Right. And so we had to go to another vet. And, of course, what happened was she's so furry. She got poop stuck in her fur. And so, poor thing, had to get her, you know, a little behind behind the scenes uh, grooming. <laughs> but we <laughs> ended up finding behind. another vet that we, yes, we vet, ended up finding another vet that we actually really liked that was just a little bit further away. But I know the process of picking a vet, like, it's almost like picking a doctor, but also like, I don't know how to choose a vet. So you have any guidance on like how to pick a vet that maybe feels right to you? Right. Well, you're talking to somebody, again, I like to look at integrative veterinary care versus just strictly Western medicine. Um, And finding an integrative vet is very difficult because there's not as many out there as conventional vets. But I would encourage people to find a vet that you feel comfortable with and that is open to listening to what you're doing for care for your dog. You know, the one thing about holistic medicine that I love is that they look at the entire body, the entire dog. If they have an issue, right. let's let's find out what the underlying issue is, as opposed to conventional medicine that will just medicate and not really look into the root cause. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily True Crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short-form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So, why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts. And remember, stay safe. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Ninen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future. 
and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. So there are so many, you know, routine things that can be done for your dog, vaccinations, heartworm, flea and tick treatments. A big one is teeth cleaning. And the average bill to have your dog's teeth cleaned is $500 because mostly the wow. anesthesia that's involved. And I, I mean, gosh, Winston hasn't had his teeth cleaned now for three years, but that's because I brush his teeth. And it's made such a difference and periodontal health really dictates the health for the rest of the body. So if you find a vet, even if they're a conventional vet, you have to have a dialogue that is open between both of you. You know, if, if they say, Oh, it's time for Winnie's vaccinations again. And she's, you know, let's say three years old now, I personally would not go ahead and get the vaccinations because studies are showing that over vaccination is causing a lot of issues with dogs, with their health. And that over 90% of dogs that had all of their puppy shots are still protected with the antibodies throughout their entire life. So when wow, we vaccinate it, yeah. And there's a test. That is, it's a test um, that they can do with blood called a titer test. And the titer, you know, the, the big ones are parvo and rabies that we get vaccinations for. But titer testing can just do a quick blood test and tell you, yes, my dog is not protected. I need a booster. Or, as I said, over 90% of dogs do have the protection and they have the antibodies. Um, I know here in Colorado, a lot of um, boarding facilities, groomers, they will take titers in lieu of vaccination. You know, this is proof my dog is protected against, you know, rabies, parvo, what have you. So, this is just stuff that I'm learning and the guests that I have on are teaching us so much that, you know, most vets that go to school, they aren't taught about nutrition and they aren't taught about the tighter testing or, um, gosh, so many other things, acupuncture, chiropractic, you name it there are options for your dogs and Winston is going through rehab right now for arthritis and he's in an underwater treadmill and he has cold laser therapy and massage. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that sounds like a, sounds like a, a fun day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's, he's just a little spoiled. Well, tell me a little bit. I want to Dive in a little bit about your podcast, your podcast, uh, yes. Wag Out Loud. Tell me a little bit about like some of your your favorite episodes that you think we all should should be listening to. Wow, I you know what comes to mind. There's a company uh, actually here in Colorado, Bond Pet Foods. They are they took the DNA of a healthy chicken replicated it in the lab to be the exact profile, protein profile of the original chicken. So they have this chicken made in the lab. It's exactly the same. So you don't have to slaughter as many animals, which is amazing. So this is up and coming technology that we will soon see in pet food. Um, my two most downloaded episodes uh, actually were, were the same guest. Rita Hogan is the canine herbalist, and she did one on how to treat pancreatitis naturally. 
and one how to get rid of lipomas, which are those squishy lumps that lumps and bumps that a lot of dogs get. Um, so those have been the two most mm, downloaded right. episodes ever. So tell me a little bit about, um, because I know that you do a lot of this integrated uh, kind of holistic, um, you know, uh, research and, you know, your show is really pointed in this direction, you know, for the, for the dog's wellness. Does insurance pay for all this? Like you're talking about, you know, the underwater therapy and the acupuncture yeah. and different things like that. Or are those really out-of-pocket costs and, and just another thing that we should kind of be prepared for? That's a great question, Shauna. And unfortunately, insurance does not cover it. Uh, but again, with those of us who view our dogs as family and have the money to be able to try these different modalities, uh, what I see with a lot of dogs, unfortunately, that are on all these different medications is that a lot of times, just like with human medicine, these medications have side effects, and then you have to give another medication for that side effect. So our dogs, right. unfortunately, are being over-medicated, where these alternative therapies that have been proven to work, scientifically proven, are addressing the underlying issue and they don't have to be on all of these drugs. So I really encourage people to, to look into, you know, I mentioned the cold laser therapy. Um, there's amazing supplements on the market that do so much like Winston's on a joint medication and it has green lipped muscle as the first ingredient which has been shown to be an even better anti-inflammatory than fish oil. So wow, it's, it's just educating ourselves and we're learning so much every single day that there are different ways to address our health as well as our dog's health. Well, Krista, we have talked about so much. I know we could probably talk for hours and hours and hours <laughs> on our on our doggies. But, you know, just to kind of wrap up here, I, I'm curious, you know, what are maybe your best tips on things we should do or things we should think about to kind of keep our dogs like happy and, and healthy kind of going forward? Well, I want to thank you so much, Shauna, for having me on. And I mean, Anybody that loves their dog, you know, you're, you're a good person in my book. And if we can do anything, again, I would go back to the diet. Um, a lot of people don't know that dogs have no nutritional need for carbohydrates. Yet these kibble diets. Really? I mean, you just have, yeah. <laughs> they can live on protein and fat, and that's what they did for years and years. Um, and these kibble diets have over 40% carbohydrates. So these starches, these simple sugars that are included lead to inflammation and actually lead to a lot of the uh, health issues that our dogs are experiencing, the allergies, the leaky gut syndrome. So I would just encourage people to look into feeding the best that they can. And in a perfect world, that would be a raw or cooked fresh diet. But my one warning is if people cook for their dogs, you must find a recipe and stick to that recipe that has been put together by a veterinary nutritionist or somebody in the field, because most of the ones you find online are deficient in the nutrients that our dogs need. So you could do more harm than good by cooking at home. Um, I've got lots of resources on my website of places that you can go for free um, with recipes and calculators uh, on how to feed 
your dog appropriately if you want to home cook for them. I, of course, loved this whole conversation, but my biggest takeaway was to really think about what kind of food I'm feeding Winnie. As always, we talk about here, it all starts with wellness, even for our fur babies. It also makes sense. I am careful how I eat and what I put in my body, so I should probably be doing the same for our dog. Of course, that always means spending more money, but when it comes to your dog, their health and well-being is a true investment that might just end up saving you money in the long run, as well as just giving you some peace of mind. Krista shared so many great resources, and I have them all linked in the show notes. You can also head to wagoutloud.com to listen to all her podcast episodes and check out her reviews of new products and services, resources, and so much more. See, we made it all the way to the end of the episode and no jokes about who let the dogs out. Okay, almost made it. If you love this episode as much as I did, share it now with all your friends and family members who also love their furry best friend. You can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guest, as well as our amazing sponsors who make this show possible. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can. In the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC.